what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. I got another video for you right now. Haven't been on here in a while. But here's the thing, when I come across something and I can't find any documentation on it or information that I'm looking for, I find it important to document it myself, publish it so other people can find it if for some reason they're looking for it. So today's video might be a little long. I'm not sure how much is going to be in this video. There might be a few videos in this series of videos about this particular thing I'm working on. So if you guys remember a while back, I was uh, posting videos here and there on riding an electric motorcycle. It was a zero electric motorcycle. And that electric motorcycle was sort of my responsibility to make sure it was charged and take care of it at a uh, facility that I was at a while back. And since then, that uh, electric motorcycle happened to have some problems, have some issues, and the battery was sitting and it didn't get charged because the charger or the battery was not working correctly or there was some issue. And uh, I knew about it and I asked the individuals who had it if they'd be willing to uh, either uh, give it to me uh, or something under the, under the regulations there. Basically, can I acquire it? in some fashion and they were kind enough to actually give it to me which was a huge blessing now what I want to do with it is a use it and have fun with it and b actually use it to, to get to work and back I think that the work uh, where I'm at now and here I think I can get there and back on a single charge however the bike that I'm talking about is this one right here now this is a 2009 Zero electric motorcycle flagship. The actual name that they named it was a Zero MX 2009. Um, that's about all the data. This thing was originally sold in August 11th, 20 or 2009. So it is, uh, yeah, over 10 years old. Um, it's had two battery replacements because the batteries were sitting dead. I should say it's had one replacement. The original one died. And then the one that I'm going to show you now is also dead. So I don't know what happened, if it was a charger problem, a connection problem, or a battery problem. But it sat, it died. I tried to recover the cells, which are sitting right there. Couldn't get that to work. So my plan is to reverse engineer this bike to a point where I can explain it to you guys. And you can kind of see how they did this. So this was the beginning of zero electric motorcycles. In fact... When we had to try to get this bike serviced when I was working uh, with these people a while back, they actually wouldn't even service it because they had no recollection, they had no real information, and the guys that worked at the facility at, at Zero Electric Motorcycle actually said, we really don't even work on those because we don't know how, because they're so outdated that we don't even do that. Because this was their original first startup production bike, which is pretty cool that there is one here. The serial number on this guy, um, well, this is invoice number 621. So they've only made 621 invoices from this bike. So that was a long time ago. Um, the serial number, there it is. It says right here, this is number 318. So it is the beginning of the beginning for zero. So what I plan on doing in this video is showing you all of the stuff that you see on the back of my bench here, all of the stuff that I've ripped out of here. There is actually nothing left in this frame. I can lift it up with almost no effort. And uh, I've stripped all of the electronics off of it. And I will show you the frame and I will show you what uh, the pieces are on the frame and the, the brakes and the few things that are left. And then all the electronics are on the bench back here and I'm going to show you all of the electronics, how um, I perceive them to be working, and just talk about a few things. There's a few very interesting things that I want to reference here. One of them is how they're doing speed controlling. The other one is that they were actually using CAN bus to talk to the battery, and they had their own little control box, which was horribly designed, in my opinion, and I'll show you why. So anyway, that's the introduction to this project. Like I said, uh, my guess is that there'll be a couple of videos about this because what I plan on doing is rebuilding that battery pack with batteries that I have to make the system function the way it used to function but under my new methodology with a new control box because the way they had all that configured is not really feasible to do with the cells that I have. So anyway, that's what this video is about, documenting their original flagship for people to see how the battery was constructed, how some of the electronics worked and a few things that are just terrible about it. So let's get started. 
All right, so I took the uh, wide-angle lens off my camera there. Uh, my kids are screaming in the background. I'm sure you can hear that. Having fun with the neighbors. So this is it. This is the original flagship. It is stripped down. There's nothing left. In case you're wondering, there are the body parts. Here is the seat. All right, that's what the seat looks like. And everything else is on my bench, compiled in this mess. But the frame, real quick, I don't actually know the, actu the, the final weight of this frame. Um, however, it is super light. In fact, this little plate right here comes off, that's how you switch the battery out. And it almost feels as light as magnesium. It could be a magnesium. Um, here is the data sheet in case, or the stamp on the front of this thing in case you ever wanted to kind of know what it said. Can't wrap my hand around the back. There you go. Well, there's the serial on there, I think. Um, so, yes, here it is. The only piece of plastic I didn't take off was this. It does have the uh, the key switch in it. It's just a normal standard key switch. Um, the only real damage that I saw on this while looking it over was this front turn bracket broke off. So this is supposed to hit these and not allow the the front forks to turn too far. Now they hit the back side. They hit under this back, which is not great. I will probably leave this alone. I'm guessing that it got slammed to the ground one time or more than one time and actually broke that off because when the handlebars hit, it twists that and obviously probably hits it. Now, um, I probably need to do an alignment on this when I finish it. The only other damage that I can see is this right here. This little cable is kinked and this is actually a real hydraulic line. So these are hydraulic brakes, all right, and they work really well, but you can feel that that one has possibly a hole in it because you can feel it leaking past. Can't see, it's too dark. Anyway, then the back brakes are the same. They are disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes, which is pretty sweet. And they're in decent condition. I haven't checked the brake pads, but I'm sure they're probably fine. There isn't very many miles on this bike, to my knowledge. I probably put most of them on there a while back. Here's kind of what the frame looks like. Uh, the motor, motor mounting plate here. And then on the other side, look at that one-handed, easy peasy, it's so light. On the other side, I put the bubble wrap here to keep it from scratching up. Um, there is no kickstand, by the way. On this side, you can see there's this plastic chain bracket, and then this plastic chain bracket is on the bottom. What that does is uh, it looks like UHMW, and it just guides the chain to the sprocket. All right, so that's kind of how that is. The only other thing I saw that I need to fix is this started coming really loose, and I need to tighten that. Foot pedals. Nope, sorry, they kick up like this. So in case you do dump it, it's pretty easy. Anyway, so the frame apparently is some sort of an aluminum uh, airframe grade aluminum. Um, airplane grade aluminum. It's really, really light. Uh, and like here, it's super thin. I'm not sure if you can see. You can see how thin it is right there. So this one the bracket piece here is a little thicker, but it's relatively lightweight. So that's the bike frame. Now we'll move on to some of the electronics. Hi, Riley. Hi. What's up? Uh, really nothing right now. Cool. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the battery. This has very interesting battery construction, very interesting cell selection, and just overall a very interesting design. Um, so back in 2009, uh, the electric motorcycle and car wasn't really a huge thing at the time so this was pretty advanced in the uh, way of construction and design and uh, making sure the batteries don't die and everything else so I will post a bunch of pictures while I talk about this of when I tore this battery apart but there is one website I'm going to show you what it looked like on their website and they give you a good description of what the uh, batteries are so these are an LIMNO24 battery very interesting battery. So the actual uh, information on the battery is here. This is the type of cell that it was. It's an IMR-26700A. And some of the uh, data is here on each one of these guys. So these are normal, uh, 
a normal or nominal voltage of 3.8 volt and they're 11 watt hour batteries each cell so they're 2900 milliamp hours you can kind of see some other data there so very interesting uh, battery choice um, this was I believe before the lithium iron phosphate battery but it's a very similar family of batteries but the voltage are, are a little bit more towards the standard lithium battery so it's a little higher voltage on these than the uh, other kind now they were using a very interesting battery management system here is all the cabling for the battery management system the BMS all right and each leg of every one of these has a fuse in it which is nice to see and that goes back to this board which interestingly enough is molded on this plate so I can't actually even take this apart this is a solid molded chunk all right you can see it's been layered on there glued on there or whatever I'm not sure if they had a form I don't know exactly but the only part of the circuit board that sticks out is the lights and a part of a chip an IC chip and then there is a I believe this looks like a program port if I can pull those off so there's a little port for programming on there as well so ultimately very interesting design choice there's the plug on this side and this plate fits in the side of this battery housing so this battery housing itself is molded out of a single piece uh, in case you're wondering there's my hand-drawn schematic of how the BMS was connected not real important anymore um, you can see it's actually one piece and it looks like they attached a piece across the top so this piece was a solid piece and then they fixed this they had a grate on this side and holes on this side Although, because of how they constructed the battery, I'm not sure how much airflow and cooling that that actually helped. So, there is two batteries in here. All right, this is the size of one cell. So, there's one cell here, one cell here, and then there's a connector between those two for the BMS. So, between here, you've got twice a single battery voltage, and then across the whole thing, you've got 14 uh, cells in series one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve in parallel okay so it's a 12 parallel 14 series battery bank so this guy is just under 2000 watt hours it's uh just barely under that so it's a pretty big battery if my memory serves me correct i believe it was around a 35 watt hour or 35 amp hour battery pack so, uh, interesting construction that just slid in here, and I will just go through the pictures right now and show you how this whole thing was kind of constructed. They had foam around everything um, to keep it secure, and then they had this really nice, heavy duty, rubberish, uh, kind of like hot glue, but not holding everything together. So, that's the battery construction, and um, now I'm going to show you how the actual battery pack itself was constructed, which is very, very interesting. All right, so first of all, I want to tear one of these apart and kind of show you how it's made or part of one. So, they just had double sided tape holding these packs together, and so therefore there was no, there was a gap between here, but there could be no airflow between here. So, they should have maybe put the tape in a different direction to keep the airflow through the, the, the pack because you could have stacked these a lot tighter. But I think they did that to get a little bit of air throw, air flow through there. Now, here's what's really, really, really interesting about the way this battery pack is constructed. So I'm going to take one of these apart and I'm going to show you exactly what's in here. Okay. I've never seen a battery constructed in this method. So they got this outer shell wrapped on here. All right. Then what they got is a rubber band. Yes, that's right an actual rubber band holding the connections together. That's it. This is actually what it looks like is a, an inner tube tire slice. It's not very stretchy, so it doesn't really have a whole lot of holding force um, or, or a lot of stretch to it, I should say. Okay, so these are just sitting on here. I'll take these off. So you can see these wire connectors are just sitting on here. Very, very, very interesting construction. 
And then, to allow the BMS cable to be attached, they literally just have this wrapped around one side of those cells, and that wire is just connecting to this side, which is the negative side of this row of batteries. And these cells, that's still live. I did try to charge some of these batteries. <laughs> Those are apparently are the good cells. These are probably the bad ones. Almost every one of these, every other one of these is dead. So this row was not recoverable, and this one recovered, but probably lost a lot of power or a lot of uh, energy storage capability. Okay, so you can see at least they did put some sort of a actual um, compound on here to keep it from corroding, which was nice to see. It could be conductive. I'm not sure if it's conductive. And they just have a little paper cardboard roll on there. So that is actually the cell construction, which is very, very, very interesting. Um, very strange. Let's see if this one's hot. Yeah, that one's got a little left in it. Well, that's good. And then on this side, without taking those apart, they look like this. They're just cardboard tubes to hold the two cells together. So by far the most strangest cell construction I've ever seen in my life, because this pack is rated for 300 amps. So for a 300 amp pack, they are just using flattened uh, ribbon cable, right? It's a tin coated copper cable. And then they just sandwiched all these together. I can pull any of these cells out. They all just fall out. And that that is, the, that is bizarre to me. That's a strange construction because this thing is in a moving, bouncing around, you know, electric motorcycle, and yet this was the construction choice. However, uh, I've never heard anybody complain that they've had any problems with these batteries, except for them dying, of course, when they don't charge them right. So that's enough about the battery. I will take this battery apart the rest of the way so it doesn't get shorted out and blow up my house. Now let's move on to talking about the electrical components beyond the battery. Alright, so I just disassembled the rest of that pack. Really quickly, I did want to say uh, one more interesting thing, and that is that these batteries and cells, because they're individual and they're not uh, stamped together, I can use for all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, but the thing is, is when I got this pack, it was sitting at less than 2 volts, and I tried charging individually each uh, bank of batteries to try to bring them up to a voltage that was uh, reasonable with this pack and almost every other one of these was dead so if this row was chargeable this row would just get hot so there's an internal short um, and I couldn't recover them that makes this whole pack pretty well junk so what I can do is keep each row of cells because they're probably balanced and in fact they're marked on the side of here, they're marked on the side of the tubes, and the batteries themselves actually have that indicator number. So they were probably tested for uh, proper resistance and made sure that everything was still, um, you know, perfectly uh, resistive balanced. So these are probably important to keep in their packs when I use them as a pack. So I could build a pack, that would be about half this because I lost about half the batteries and still use this BMS for that purpose and it would work. Um, however, uh, you know, that's not an option that I'm willing to take because I want maximum range out of this. But this is still a good bank of batteries for a power wall or something like that. All right, well, enough of that. That took a lot of effort to describe that battery. Let's talk about the electronics. This shouldn't take too much, too much time. So, First things first, on the front of the motorcycle, this is the box, okay, that you get, and it's got a torque setting, high-low, and it's got a speed setting, 0 to 50 miles per hour or 0 to 25 miles per hour, okay, and you just select which one you want. Now, this is great and dandy, but there's one really huge complaint about this box, but before I tell you that, let me show you the construction. So, on the inside of it, it looks like this, it's kind of dark need a flashlight but it's basically just a couple of switches there's an aluminum plate that goes through this this literally looks like a regular project box it is just a cheapo 
box. On the front, you have these indicators which come through the front and is screwed onto these standoffs. So if I can get this back in here, what it is is these little LEDs just stick out of the front just like so. So you get your little LED indicator sticking out the front just right through this little panel which is probably really fun to construct these little things. Then on the back side you have this very complicated circuit board. There is a lot going on with this little circuit board that I want to talk about. But before I get to that, this goes in here, then there's a plug that goes to the strips of wires on the back. Now, there's a couple reasons why I'm going to redo what I'm redoing here. One, the battery is dead and the BMS talks to this unit. So I either have to use the BMS on my new battery or find a way to make sure that the proper CAN bus signals are getting back to this. Um, so this controller has a CAN bus transceiver on it. This is why I know that um, it is off of CAN bus. All right, get a couple of really good shots. And if you look really closely, you can see this board has some corrosion on it. And this is the part I wanted to talk about. So this is a dirt bike. A dirt bike is going to get dirty, and you're going to probably wash it off with a hose. So if you look at the construction, the way these lights come through the front, there is absolutely no seal there whatsoever, anywhere you can find. Now the switches are the same way. They just come straight through. There's no seals or anything, which means even though this is sticking up, if you got water on this or if you sprayed this with water, to wash the bike off, let's say, you basically get everything corroded and wet and everything goes to pots. And although I'm pretty sure that all the functions work on this, you can see the amount of corrosion on this little guy, which probably didn't get too much water, but just enough to corrode it. Now, the controller here, okay, is a generic non-programmable controller, which we'll look at closer. However, what's interesting is they've got a torque setting and a speed setting, which means they're limiting the throttle within this little unit right here, which is why this little unit is also important for uh, controlling this whole motorcycle the way I want to control it as well. Now, on the throttle side of things, you have a two-wire throttle. I haven't measured this, but I'm pretty sure it's probably just a resistive element, 0 to 5K throttle. That's probably what this is, okay? Uh, it says made in Germany and it does have a name on the side which you can read right there. But there's no part numbers on this guy and I can't see anything about it. Now on the other side of the bike you have the horn, the turn, the high-low, um, park high or park and then your headlights and then you have this very strange, this one's broke, kill switch. Alright, very kind of strange to me. Um, also on the throttle side, you have a regular kill switch. So this all actually goes to a wiring harness, which is this mess. Okay, and this wiring harness plugs into the back side of this. Also note, the battery has a plug that goes to the CAN bus, and it is wired all the way up to here. Like I said, there's a CAN bus transceiver on here, there's a PIC microcontroller, and there's a few other ICs that I've checked out and kind of went through this board on my own terms and trying to figure out how this originally worked. So what's interesting is because you get these high-low current or high-low torque and high-low speed, what's actually happening is they're taking the throttle command, they are recalculating it in their PIC controller and they're sending most likely, and hopefully I will diagnost, uh, do some diagnostics on this with the oscilloscope and I can show you, but I'm guessing right now is what they're doing is they're controlling the pulse width and duty cycle to control the speed and the torque on that motor, which is a very interesting way to go about it. Because they bought a non-programmable controller, they are using an external source to interface the throttle the battery voltage and all the logistics of the battery. Controlling that in here, including the turn signal and all the other gadgets go into this little brain and the pick microcontroller and the processes on it basically control 
the throttle at different torques and speeds, which I found rather interesting. That's an interesting way to interface it, and to be fair, I kind of like the way they did that. So I probably won't use this original board. I will probably make my own, but I'll have to go through everything and actually design and build that. Mine will be a little easier, but the main reason that I have to do that when I build my set sort of uh, battery here, which I'll show you in a little bit, is because I have a different cell count, so I can't use this. We'll get to that later. So beyond that, let's look at the motor controller a little closer. All right, so here is the motor controller. I didn't unattach all of these wires. Real quickly, there is a DC-DC converter down to 12 volts, right? 10 amps, 12 volts out. And this is for all of the other stuff on the motorcycle, like the headlights and the turn signals and all the other gadgets. However, the motor controller itself, right here, I'm going to give you all the data you need. Right there, it says 0 to 5K resistive output. So that is very interesting. That's a zero tag number. And here is the uh, original tag on the motor controller. And then on the front side of this, you can see, if I can get it in there, it's in all tracks, and you can see how the throttles, there's a throttle one, throttle two, key on, there's an LED on there, and then there's a half speed, and that's actually half speed reverse. It is not being used, it's not connected. So at the end of the day, I'd like to reverse engineer all the wiring and draw up a schematic for you, but to be fair, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to get that far, especially in this video. So that's the controller. There's a solenoid on the front that just allows you to turn on the power to the controller and then allow the controller to actually do all the um, um, manipulation of the current voltage to control the motor. So that's pretty simple. Non-programmable, that's why this part is really important because this actually does all the intermediate programming. Now I could completely remove this, but then I have no battery management, which is bad. This was doing the battery management and controlling the solenoid to turn off the bike so that one of the cells doesn't go too low and ruin the battery. That's why this is important. All right, and pretty well lastly, besides the front light, right, which has a horn right here, the light, a little indicator light, you got the two uh, lights here, and the back, why we're showing the wire and wiring harness, it's just got two lights, and it does have a tail light. The interesting thing, though, is I don't quite know how they're controlling the tail light because there's no brake indicator buttons on my brakes. So that, I'm actually not sure how that works. We'll play with that later. But the last major component of this is the motor, the critical piece. Now, this is actually a permanent magnet DC motor. So it is a brushed, you can see all the brush um, wires go into the brushes inside. And if you look really closely, you can see that there's a magnet, what appears to be on both sides of the, uh, of the internals. The actual data tag is on the bottom. Let me get in there so we can see it. So you can see it is a PMG, all right, permanent magnet, and serial number, the date is 09, and um, it looks like it's 24 to 70 volts DC, 2.2 to 7.2 kilowatts, depending on your voltage. It is rated for 110 amps, which I thought was interesting because the motor controller is 300 amps. However, this does have a, um, I believe, a higher peak. So torque peak is 38 newton meters, and the standard torque for this is about 18.5 newton meters. Speed is 1,080 to 300, or 3,480. And uh, yeah, it's a beefy little booger. It weighs quite a bit. Um, I'm interested to seeing that it's not a brushless motor, but instead they went with a brushed motor. You can see those fins moving on the outside, right here around the outside. So this motor is very heavy, actually. I don't know what the weight is, but it's heavier than I thought it would be. However, this is actually a steel casing. You can see it's rusting, rusting here. So steel casing, and then they've got these aluminum bolt-on fins to try to keep it cool. They've also got another bolt-on front plate. So there's a bolt here, here, 
here and here. This plate mounts onto this frame, and then they designed this to slide onto their actual motorcycle mount. And then the front even has a little aluminum attachment with a fin on it. You can see the sprocket there. So interesting motor choice. Um, to me anyway, I think that's an interesting motor choice. But, you know, it does work. And that's that. Okay, well, that took a little longer than I expected, but I did want to give you as much detail as possible. Now, one of my original plans was to repair the battery and get it working and just leave everything as it is. However, um, the battery cell count and voltage is a little higher than what batteries that I have on hand that I can use for this project. So I'm going to have to do something a little different and have to really work this whole thing over and kind of redesign all the electronics from ground up in order to do what I want and make it uh, safe and reliable. So, you know, that's what the original unit looked like. I want to reverse engineer all this, but to be fair, I may not ever get to that point. It should be pretty simple to make the battery management system uh, content so that everything is working properly and then connect all the electronics and then check the output signals going to this controller and a few other things just to uh, kind of understand a little more details but that's not going to be in this video and to be fair I may not have the time to get around to it but at least we documented everything else now my plan is to actually build a new battery pack however I'm going to be using these batteries Okay, I happen to have some of these on hand, and I'm going to use them. These are K2 lithium iron phosphate cells. Okay, these are uh, 10.24 watt hours. I believe they're 330 milliamp hour, uh, but they're 3.2 volt. So this battery pack originally has uh, 14 and 12, so 12 in parallel, 14 in series. Okay, this speed controller will only uh, handle 60 volt max DC. So that battery was a good battery voltage for this. Um, you can do the math to figure it out because I'll probably say it wrong. However, those being 3.8 volt nominal, these are 3.2 volt nominal. So in order to use these cells, I actually need to add another row. Okay, so instead of 14, uh, I actually need 16. I need two more rows or two more parallel banks of batteries, which means I can't use this battery management controller, which means I can't use the CAN bus function that's going to this little board, which means I can't integrate all this into the controller. Basically means I have to build something from the ground up. Now, I happen to have quite a few of these cells. My goal is to put 240 of these cells in there. There is 120. Uh, I believe of those cells, no, probably less than that. You do the math, there's a little less than that. But to make up a 12 volt battery here, I'm going to basically uh, need exactly eight of these in series, all right? And I have 15 of these in parallel, which gives me 120 batteries, and I can put two of those together. Let me show you the bank that I have prepared right now without hurting myself. This is the battery bank right now. So there is quite a few batteries right here, 120 of them to be precise, and I can get exactly what I need in here just perfectly, but I gotta design and engineer some of my own uh, little cell packs in order to pack them in there in the right geometry. But they will fit in here, and then I have a active battery balancing circuit board that I ordered from eBay, which I'll show you when I get it, and I'm going to be using that to balance those batteries actively. So instead of burning the energy off the resistive balancing, this is an actual active inductive charge balancing circuit. Now the only thing it doesn't have is any protection. Now on this battery, the output is direct. So on the output, you just have a 300 amp fuse and it goes straight here to the output to the motor controller. So the only way you can protect this, right, you can't protect it with overcurrent until the fuse blows, and you can't protect it from under voltage because it's directly connected to everything, which is why this battery, when it sits, it dies because it's slowly drawing a charge off of it. Now, 
when I do what I'm doing, I have an act active battery balancer, but I'll also be directly connected. So I don't have a battery management system that allows me to drive through a bunch of MOSFETs and control if there's too much current. So it's very important um, to use the active balancer and monitor each one of the packs of cells, which allows me to basically say, okay, if any of those get below a certain voltage, then I need to shut the whole entire system down so I don't kill one row of batteries that's a little lower voltage than the rest of the batteries. So the battery balancer is like one and a half amp balancer, but if you're pulling 30 amps or 50 amps or 100 amps continuously, it's not gonna be able to balance that out fast enough. And so I have to monitor all that, which is kind of what this circuit board and this circuit board did in this motorcycle. So this made sure and checked, and if any one of the individual rows of cells goes below a voltage, this says, talking by CAN bus, says, okay, turn me off, you're too low. Although the battery pack itself might have been a proper voltage, we don't want an individual row of cells to get too low. So, those are my plans for the future. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to work on this, so it's going to be probably a while in between each one of these videos, but anyway. Documented, 2009, uh, zero flagship electric motorcycle. This is what's in it. So thanks for watching. God bless you guys. If you have a comment, question, or you want to see something in more detail, please let me know down in the comments. Until then, don't blow anything up. As I haven't done yet. But I might. See ya. Thanks for watching. God bless. See ya.